Hello, and welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with Pollyanna. Chapter 4, A Room in the Attic. Miss Polly was reading when Nancy and the little girl arrived. She did not get up from her chair. How do you do, Pollyanna, she said, holding out her hand dutifully. But the child darted across the room and flung herself onto her startled aunt's lap. Oh, Aunt Polly, Aunt Polly, I am so, so glad that you came... Let me come to live with you. It's just lovely to have you and Nancy ever just having the ladies' aid. I imagine so, said Mrs. Polly with a frown on her face as she tried to remove the little girl's clinging arms around her neck. Now please stand up, Pollyanna. Let me see what you look like. Pollyanna laughed nervously as her aunt's eyes inspected her. Oh, I guess I'm not very pretty because of my freckles. Oh, and I ought to explain about the red gingham dress and the worn-out black velvet thing with spots on it. Father said, never mind what your father sa said, Miss Polly interrupted. I suppose you have a trunk? Oh, yes, indeed, Aunt Polly. I have a lovely trunk that the ladies aide gave me. I don't have many clothes, but I do have father's books. Mrs. White said I ought to keep Listen to me, Pollyanna, said Miss Polly. Let's make it clear from the start that I don't want to hear you talk about your father. Now let us go up to your room. The child grew silent and tears welled up in her eyes. I guess I should be glad she doesn't want to hear about father, Pollyanna said to herself. Maybe it will be easy for me if I don't talk about him. I miss him so terribly. As they went upstairs, Pollyanna looked at all the rooms with their beautiful furniture, lacy curtains, and deep, soft carpets. What a lovely house, Aunt Polly. You must be glad to be so rich. Her aunt turned around sharply. Pollyanna, I'm surprised at you. It would be simple, sinful to be proud of the gifts that the Lord gave me. Miss Polly was relieved now that she had arranged for her niece to live in a plain and sensible attic room. Besides keeping her away from the valuable things she might soil or break, she would break her pride. Pollyanna's imagination wandered as she walked through the big house. She tried to guess which of the wonderful and interesting rooms might be for her very own. But soon they passed the lovely sights and climbed another flight of stairs to a hot little space where they Roof almost met the floor. Suitcases and boxes were stored there, along with oversized bags holding Miss Polly's winter clothes. Miss Polly opened a door on the right and turned to her niece. Here is your room, Pollyanna. Do you have a key for your trunk? Pollyanna nodded. When I ask you a question, please answer out loud instead of just moving your head. Yes, Aunt Polly. I think you have everything you need here, Pollyanna said her aunt, pointing toward the towels hanging neatly on the rack and the water in the pitcher. I will send Nancy up t to help you unpack your trunk. Supper will be so promptly at 6 o'clock every evening. After Miss Polly left, Pollyanna stared unhappily at the hard floor, the empty walls, and the bare window. Then she fell to her knees by the bed and sobbed her heart out. Nancy found her a few minutes later and wrapped her arms around her. I was fearing you might be feeling this way, Miss Pollyanna. Oh, Nancy, cried the child. It's just so hard for me to understand that God and the angels needed my father more than I did. They did not either, Nancy thought to herself. They are now... Give me the keys and I'll try to unpack your things, she said out loud. There aren't too many of them, pa Pollyanna said tearfully. Well then, well then, we'll unpack them that much more quickly. I guess I can be glad about that. Don't you think, Pollyanna smiled, said Pollyanna smiling suddenly. Nancy didn't answer, but continued to unpack the books and the, un and the uh, patched clothes.
I'm sure this will be a very nice room, continued Pollyanna, and I'm really glad that there isn't a mirror because now I will be able to see my freckles. Suddenly, Pollyanna clapped her hands and jumped with joy. Oh, look, Nance. See? Look out the window at the beautiful trees and the houses and the church steeple with the river shining like silver. Now, I won't need any pictures inside to look at. I'm really glad now that Aunt Polly gave me this room. Nancy, horrified, burst into tears. Well, what's wrong, Nancy? Asked Pollyanna, hugging our new friend. Why, well, your little angel sent straight from heaven, and that woman... Oh, drat, there's her bell calling me. Nancy left the room and raced downstairs to her mistress. The hot sun was burning into Pollyanna's room. The little girl raised her, the window sashes. Flies buzzed in, but she hardly noticed. She leaned out and saw a large tree with long branches and seemed to invite her to play. Pollyanna stepped onto the window ledge and from there grabbed the nearest branch and swung from limb to limb. She had always loved to climb trees. It was quite far from the lowest branch to the ground, but she made it, landing on hands and knees in the soft grass. She breathed the fresh air happily. Polly Anna found herself at the back of the old house. An old man was working in the garden. Beyond the garden was a path leading through an open field and up a hill to a pine tree standing next to a big rock. She raced towards the path. The dinner bell rang at exactly at six o'clock. When Polly Anna failed to appear, Miss Polly frowned, tapped the floor with her foot, and finally sat down to the table alone. Nancy went to hold to see whether or not the child was coming down the stairs. My niece is late, Nancy, but do not call her. I told her what time supper is served. She must learn to be prompt or suffer the consequences. When she comes down, you may give her milk and bread in the kitchen. As soon as dinner was over, Nancy crept up to the back steps of the attic, muttering to herself, Bread and milk indeed. Pollyanna hasn't eaten all day. She must be starved, and the poor little lamb has been crying her eyes out. Nancy opened the door to the attic room and called out to Pollyanna. There was no answer. The child was not there. Nancy looked in the closet under the bed and even into the trunk. In panic, she flew downstairs and out to the garden. Mr. Tom! Mr. Tom! The child is gone! Vanished! She's surely gone straight up to heaven and eaten angel food. food. Bread and milk indeed! Tom smiled and pointed ahead. Well, she sure tried to get to close to heaven as she could. There she is on top of that rock yonder. Okay, that's the end of that chapter. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. <laughs>